want you to take your Bibles this morning or open up your electronic devices, whatever you might have, and I want you to turn to the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 5. We're going to be in the uh, Mark chapter 5 for about three weeks, and then we're going to be one week in Mark chapter 6. We're going to begin a new series today that I've entitled, Change. You know, one of the hardest things that we do in this life is to try to change. I wonder how many of you would be honest enough, now don't raise your hand, but be honest in your heart before God this morning. Would you say, there's an error in my life I need to change? Maybe it's in a physical part of your life, in the physical arena of your life, or maybe it's in a spiritual part of your life, some spiritual thing, but there's something in your life today that you know needs to be changed. My hope and prayer for this series is that you will find strength through the Lord Jesus Christ to be able to change anything in your life. Whether again, it's in the physical realm or the spiritual realm, whatever it might be, but before this series is over, that you will be able to change it and be better off because of it. So today, as we start this series, Change, I want to talk to you today about a very big change in a man. In fact, we know him as a, simply as a demon-possessed man who worshipped, who worshipped the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of y'all think that's a pretty good change? He is demon-possessed, and we'll learn about that in the text, has multiple demons inside of him, but then he met the Lord Jesus Christ, and in spite of the demons... The Bible says he came to Jesus, he fell down, and he worshiped the Lord. Now, here's my encouragement to you today. If a demon-possessed man full of demons can worship the Lord Jesus Christ and make such a drastic change, then what is it in our lives that we can't do the same thing? The biggest lie that the enemy tells and that people will tell you is that you can't change. But I want to tell you, you can. Mark chapter 5, as a starting point, I want you to look at verse 6. Mark chapter 5, look if you will in verse 6, talking about this demon-possessed man. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshiped him. Do not believe the enemy. The enemy will come to you. He will whisper in your ear that you can't change what you're doing. Whatever's in your life, it's impossible for you to turn around. There will be people in your life. There will be family members in your life. There'll be friends in your life. There'll be coworkers in your life. There'll be people around you who will ease up to you and tell you in one way or another, that you can't change. And here's what I want to tell you. It's all a lie. Anyone in this room, anyone watching online, anyone in the sound of my voice can change. But here's what we have been taught to believe. We were born this way. We were born this way, and because we were born this way, we cannot change. We can't help it how we were born. And so we were born this way, and because of that, we can't change. That is a lie. Or something else is said, we grew up this way. This is what we were taught. This is what we saw. This is the environment that we lived in, and because we grew up this way, We cannot change. Or people will tell you because of your father or because of your mother. You're destined to be that way. Like father, like son. Like mother, like daughter. 
You ever seen somebody that way and said their dad was that way or their mom was that way and they're following their steps? Now, I want you to listen to me this morning. I want to pour my heart out to you. Any of us anywhere can change. No matter where you are, no matter where you've been, no matter what's going on in your life, you and I can change. Now, here's the truth. We are the way we are because we want to be. That might sound a little harsh. It might sound a little rough, but it's the truth. We are the way we are today. When you boil it all down, it's because we want to be that way. And all we got to do is to say, I need change. And through the Lord Jesus Christ's help, we can experience that change. If we're honest, here's our problem. We're stagnant, aren't we? We're complacent. We have convinced ourselves through the years that we can't change. But I want to tell you today, and for the next Three weeks after today, we're going to read about some people, in spite of all the opposition, in spite of all the odds against them, they changed. Today, a demon-possessed man who worshipped. Next week, we're going to find find out about a synagogue ruler who pleaded. A synagogue ruler that was high standing in the community. They would never bow himself to plead, but we're going to find out next week the synagogue ruler, he pleaded. The following week, we're going to find about a handicapped woman with an issue of blood who touched, and because she touched, she changed. Then we're in the series talking about a hometown, a hometown of our Lord Jesus Christ who got offended. Thus, they remain the same way. So, three messages on you can change, but if you refuse to do that, the final message will show what will happen to us. So, I want you to be with us every week. I want you to invite somebody to come with you. And I believe, because we all, if we're honest, have something that needs to be changed. And I believe that through the Holy Spirit, The Lord will give us the strength to change whatever needs to be changed in our life. So this morning, a man that honestly I feel sorry for. I don't know how he got in that shape. I don't know what happened in his life. Just think about, he could have been a family man. He could have had a wife. He could have had children. We're going to learn now he's in a graveyard. Now he runs among the tombs naked. Now the Bible says he cuts himself. What happened to this man? And we're going to find out as he saw the Lord Jesus Christ, as he fell down and worshiped him, everything in his life changed. And again, it can happen to us. So let me give you three things this morning that I believe that you and I are going to have to do, that we can learn from this demon-possessed man about change. I want you to get this down. If you feel like, I don't need that much change in my life, I promise you somebody around you does. There's somebody in your family that does. There's a friend. There's somebody around you that needs to hear what I'm about to say this morning. So if you want change, we can learn it from this man, and what do we need to do? First of all, From this man's story, he wanted change. There's where change begins. You and I have got to want change. If we're happy where we are, if we don't feel like we need change, we're happy with our lot in life, we're happy with how things are going, then you and I will never experience change. 
If you can say, I'm happy, I don't need change in my own personal life in any area, I don't need it in my marriage, I don't need it with my children, I don't need it in my vocational life, I don't need it, then change will never come. But I think if we're honest and we go before God, there is change that all of us need to experience in some capacity in our life. Where does that change begin? It begins simply by this. We want change. Here's what I believe about this man. He wanted change. He was tired sleeping by the tombstones. He was tired of the summer heat and the cold nights. He was tired not being able to clothe himself properly. He was tired about the whole town making jokes about him. He's the madman in the cemetery. He was tired of that. Surely something happened in his life to get him to that point. And he came to the realization that I want something different. Maybe you're here today without Jesus Christ. Maybe through the period of 18 months or two years called COVID, you realize you need a change. You realize you're in a rut. You realize maybe you're going in the wrong direction. You realize some things are happening in your life that are not good. I'm going to tell you this morning, you can have it. And it begins by wanting something different. Now for this man, what did he want? Well, first of all, I believe he wanted a new environment. Look, if you will now, Mark chapter 5, look at verse 1 as we go through the text together. Then they, Jesus and the disciples, came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. And we're going to learn it's more than one unclean spirit. Who had his dwelling. In other words, he lived... He had his dwelling among the tombs, in the graveyard, in the cemetery. And no one could bind him, not even with chains. I believe he got tired of his environment. He got tired of his pillow being a tombstone. He got tired of the environment, the weather. He got tired of what was being said about him. He got tired of being controlled by demons. In every way, this demon-possessed man got tired. He wanted a change. He wanted a change of environment. Could I be talking to you this morning? For some of us here, if we're honest, maybe you're a young person, maybe you're a young couple, maybe you're a middle-aged couple or beyond. You need a change of environment. Maybe you're hanging around people that are not bringing you up, but rather are bringing you down. You're in that lifestyle where you're doing this and you're doing that. And because of that, it's constantly leading you away from God and not near to God. Now you find yourself not being in church on Sundays, but it's other places. And as the weeks go by, and as the months tick away, you find yourself not as close to God. You're away from God. You're away from His Word. You're away from the house of God and the people of God. I'm going to ask you this morning, do you want a new environment? Because that environment will only bring you down. This man wanted a change. He wanted a new environment. I remember many years ago, and many of you know my testimony, when I got out of God's will and I began to go towards the things of this world, I literally got sick of it. I got tired of it. And to that day, that place in Arkansas where I heard the voice of God, not audibly, but in my heart, say, Ron, what are you doing? And I remember saying to the Lord, clear as a bell, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. But Lord, I'm sick of what I'm doing. I'm sick of the life I'm living. I'm tired of it. And just that quick, just in a moment, I was changed. 
Do you need a new environment today? Are you tired of your household being a battle zone? Are you tired of constantly arguing with your companion, your spouse? Are you tired of what the children are hearing? Have you tired of trying to keep up with the Joneses while you're getting further and further in debt? You need to change today. And as long as you want to change, I believe change is possible. This man, he wanted to change. He wanted a new environment. But second of all, he wanted to be out of enslavement. Look, if you will, now in verse 4 of our text. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. Do you get the picture here? He was literally enslaved. They tried to bind him, put fetters on him, shackles upon him, chains upon him. Most of the time it didn't work, but they tried. This was his home. This is what he did. And I believe when he saw Jesus, he wanted a change. He was tired of being enslaved by demons. Whether he knew he was enslaved by them or not, I don't know. But he knew something had a control of him. He was tired of it. Jesus made an interesting statement to me in John chapter 8. I believe it's like in verse 34 where Jesus says, He who commits sin is a slave of sin. Now what do you mean by that? The word commits simply means practices. If you practice sin, you are a slave to sin. You say, Brother Ron, how do I know I'm enslaved to something? It's something that you do over and over and over again. Look up at your pastor and you can't stop. You've tried to stop. You've prayed to stop. You've asked others to help you to stop. You went to this meeting and that meeting. You took that pill and this pill. You've done everything you know how. But that sin keeps cropping up. It keeps coming back in your life. Can I tell you this morning, you're enslaved to that. As this man was enslaved by demons, enslaved by where he lived and where he did life, so you and I become enslaved to things. Can I ask you today, are you enslaved to a pill? Maybe it's a prescription. Maybe it's not. Are you? Are you enslaved to a drug? Are you? Are you enslaved to food? We all battle that one, don't we? What are we enslaved to today? Are you enslaved to that attitude that every time you talk creeps up? And every time you talk to your spouse or otherwise, you say you're not going to lose it. And every time you lose it, you're enslaved to anger. You're enslaved to jealousy. You say, I'm not going to talk about anybody today. But you find yourself doing just that. You see, we can get enslaved to a lot of things. You might not see them, but the people around you see them. Could that be why your husband doesn't want to come home at night? He just doesn't want to go there. Why your children find something to do in the evening? Why nobody wants to be around you at work? You're not making a difference for Christ at work? It can happen to all of us. We can be enslaved to so many things. But what does the Bible say? What does Jesus say? You should know the truth and the what? The truth shall set you free. 
It all begins, do you want to change? Will you and I look at our lives? Will we sit down by ourselves alone with God and say, God, speak to me. Speak to me about my life. Speak to me about what needs to change. Where I need a difference made at in my life. Because if you don't make the change, listen to me, you just keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again. Am I right? Well, I'll find a new wife. You might, but consequently, Consequently, you probably will make the same mistake over and over again. Well, I'll find a new job. I'll find a better boss. Be careful. You might not. You'll start making the same mistakes over and over again. I'm going to find somebody who knows me and understands me. Be careful. You probably won't. You'll probably start and continue to do the things over and over and over again. I'm telling you, all of us today, if we're before God, we need some change in our life. Some areas of our life that we need change. Where does change begin? What does this demon-possessed man teach us? First of all, he wanted change. Second of all, he confronted change. Now hear me on this. He had a part to play to bring change in his life. Here's what I see people do as a pastor all the time. They're enslaved to something for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. And then they come to God and want God to change them overnight. God to do all the hard lifting, all the hard work. Say a quick prayer and everything will change. Everything will turn around. But you've been in what you've been in for years and years and years. I'm not saying God can't do it, but I am saying you have a part. You have a part to play. This demon-possessed man confronted change. Not only did he want change, also he was ready to do whatever it took to see change as a reality in his life. Now, hear me today. Get this in your heart. How do I confront change? Brother Ron, there's an error in my life physically. There's an error in my life spiritually. I realize it's not good. I realize it's dragging me down. I want change. How do I confront it? It's very simple. First of all, you repent. You repent. You say, Brother Ron, I thought repentance was only for lost people who became Christians. No, no. Jesus told the church at Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2. He said, you left your first love. Repent and do the first works. Now, as a Christian, you don't repent to get saved all over again, but you repent of a sin. Listen, so that you might have fellowship with God. How do you confront change? When you really want change, how do you go about getting it in your life? You repent, which simply means this. The word repentance means you're going one way and repentance means you turn around and go the other way. You're headed in one direction and you turn to another direction. Repentance is simply going before God and say, God, I'm sorry. God, I finally realize the way I am. I finally realize what it's doing to my marriage, what it's doing to my family, what it's doing to my life and beyond. I finally realize it. And Lord, I want to change. And Lord, what I'm going to do, first of all, is come before you and get on my knees. And Lord, I'm going to repent. I'm going to repent. Look, if you will, now, again at verse 6. When he saw Jesus from afar, now notice, he ran and worshiped him. Think about this. None of those demons could keep him from doing that. (laughs) Not a one. I believe, though he might not know what the word was, he says, I want a difference. I'm going to go before God, and I'm going to kneel before God, and I'm going to tell God where I'm at, but I'm also going to tell God where I want to be. I'm going to repent. It's simply going before God and say, God, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry for the way I've been acting, the way I've been talking, the life I've been living. 
Lord, I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? Lord, I can repent. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. What is that verse saying? You repent. You confess to God where we went wrong, the wrong turn, the wrong direction, the wrong lifestyle. We go before God and God in His grace and His mercy says, I forgive you. Listen, I don't care what you're in today. I don't care how far down that dead-end street you're going. You can repent. You say, Brother Ron, you don't know what I'm into. You don't know how far I've gone. No, I do not. But I know there's a God that says, I love you. A God who says, I will forgive you. I've had, through 18 years of ministry at this church, have hundreds of people sit in my office and tell me, they're too bad. They're too far gone. God can't possibly love them, let alone forgive them. And I tell them very, very quickly, we have a God who's a God of love and forgiveness. Maybe you're here today without Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, and maybe the Holy Spirit is nudging your heart, and you realize that you turn your back on God and you've gone a long way from Him, hear me, you can change. It begins with wanting that change. It begins when you and I confront the change. Say, Lord, the best I know how, I repent. Would you forgive me? So how do we confront change? What did this demon-possessed man teach us? He says through his life, we need to repent. But not only is there repentance, but second of all, there's resistance. Now this is important. Look, if you will now, starting in verse 7. Now, we're going to read a few verses. And we're going to find... As this man repented, as he changed his mind, as he fell before the Lord, now he's going to resist those demons inside of him. Starting in verse 7. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, the Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. Now, who's speaking right here? I don't believe it's the man. It's the demon or the demons inside the man that is speaking through the vocal cords of this man. Because these demons are going to realize this man means business. We're soon out of here. We're not going to be able to be inside this man any longer, to dwell inside. Verse 8, for he said to them, come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, what is your name? Now watch. And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. So there's a demon speaking, one demon who's a spokesman. But you know what the word legion? It's a, a Roman army term. In a legion, guess how many men and soldiers there were? Between four and 6,000. That's what was inside this man. One of them, the spokesman, was speaking to Jesus. Now notice what begins to happen. Let's pick it back up in verse 10. And he begged him earnestly that he not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him saying, send us to the swine, to the pigs, that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. Now, what's happening here? The demons know something's up. They realize this man wanted a change. But he also took it a step further. He confronted them to be able to get the change. How did he do that? He repented. But also, he resisted. When those demons realize because of that, they're going to have to come out of this man, 
that this man was resisting their place in his life, what did they do? Lord, they said, Lord. They knew who was in charge. Since we got to come out of this man, since he's resisting us, since he's repented, send us into the swine. You see, demons got to have a living person or a living thing, animal, whatever it is. I've got a series on, 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 on that kind of stuff that I might be doing here maybe next year sometime. So I think we need to know what's happening in the supernatural world around us. So they realize, hey, he's repented. They realize he's resisting us. Listen, and they couldn't do anything about it. Not a solitary thing could they do about it. So they finally begged Jesus, Jesus, we got to come out of him. We know we got to come out of him. Send us into the swine. And I love that story. What happened to the swine? How I many of you know that's a lot of sausage? <laughs> Drown, right? Now, here's the encouragement. Brother Ron, I can't change. I'm not saying you're demon possessed, but you might be demon oppressed. I just feel, Brother Ron, I've been this way, and I just sense I can't change. Quit listening to that. Brother Ron, you don't know how many times I've been married. You don't know what the sins I've got into. You don't know the drugs I've got into. You don't know the crowd I've I've been messing around with. You don't know, Brother Ron, I do not know. But whatever's got a hold on you, look at me, it's going to let go in Jesus' name. When you and I do what? Confront it. When we repent and we begin to resist. What does the Bible say in James chapter 4? Submit therefore to God... Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You say, what does that mean, Brother Ron? Exactly what it says. You come before God and say, God, I submit to you. God, I submit this body towards you. I submit this mind to you, this heart to you. I submit this life to you. And then what do you do? I resist you, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of my testimony, Revelation chapter 12. And they have no recourse but to flee. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The word flee means to run in terror. It's exactly what it means in the Greek language. So no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, you can come out. You can experience change in your life. How do I do it, Brother Ron? You got to want change. If you don't want it, you'll never experience it. Second of all, you got to confront change. There's some things that you got to do. You got to repent. You got to resist. And you can do that. Lastly, I want you to notice something about this man. He demonstrated change. You see, you're going to be able to know real quick whether change was real in your life. Because change will be demonstrated in your life. People can look at you. Your wife can look at you. Your children can look at you and realize something's changed. They're not talking the way they used to talk. They're not drinking the way they used to drink. They're not doing what they used to do. They're not living the way they used to live. You have demonstrated a change where real change takes place. It's demonstrated. It's reflected in your life, and everybody can see it. What happens? Quickly, you get a new life. Look, if you will, verse 15. And they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed. Let's talk about the town, came to Jesus. The one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion, all those demons. Now watch. Look at his life now. Once he was running around the tombs naked, cutting himself, being shackled. Now look at him. Sitting, clothed, 
and in his right mind, they were afraid. Listen, this man had a new life. He was sitting down, maybe for the first time in a long time, and not running around. He had some clothes on. Let me ask you a question. Where did the clothes come from? You know where I think they came from? Jesus knew where he was going and knew what he needed because he knew what was going to happen to this man. You know what he told his disciples? Y'all bring some extra clothing with you. Clothed. Now watch this. In his right mind. Thank God. This man could go back to his wife. He could go back to his children. He maybe could see his grandchildren. He had a new life. I want to tell you today, you can have a new life. You can have change, whatever that might look like for you. You can have it today. It can be demonstrated in your life. He had a new life, but then he had a new love. Look, if you will, now at verse 18. And when he got into the boat, when Jesus got in the boat, he who had been demon possessed begged him that he might be with him. Look, he's wanting to go with Jesus. He wants to become a preacher. <laughs> Can you imagine him looking in the eyes of Jesus and tears rushing down his eyes and say, Thank you, Jesus. I got my life back. I love you so much, Jesus. Wherever you go, I want to go. I don't know what that entails. But I won't go. You see, that's what happens when you change. You fall in love with Jesus. Or you fall again in love with Jesus. That's how you know you changed. Nobody has to tell you to open your Bible. Nobody has to tell you to pray. Nobody has to beg you to come to church. I'm telling you, when you fall in love with Jesus, all this falls in place. Just fall in love with Jesus Christ, and whatever change in your life will take place. I'm a living example of that. He had a new life, he had a new love, but lastly, he had a new legacy. Now watch something very interesting. Look, if you will, verse 19. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends. He had a home. He had a family, I believe. He had friends. And tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim the Decapolis, all that Jesus had done for him, and all marveled. Jesus said, I don't need you here, son. I need you to go back to your home. I need you to go back to your friends. To the Decapolis literally means 10 cities. Probably uh, located in the Transjordan, the southern part of Galilee. You know what history says? That whole area, all 10 cities, had a sweeping revival. You know why? <laughs> this one man went back and he said look what Jesus has done for me they all knew him knew where he'd been what he had done and through that life he demonstrated a change which in return brought many people to Christ this morning what area of your life do you need change? Physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, doesn't matter what it is. If you mean business today, learn from a demon-possessed man. Though demon-possessed, found himself at the feet of Jesus, worshiping him. He wanted a change. He confronted that change. And through that, he demonstrated a life 
changed by Jesus. As your heads bowed and your eyes closed, as Greg comes in the praise team, quickly, I don't want to take a lot of time, but I want to give you an opportunity. I want to give you an opportunity to respond to the Lord today. If you really mean business and you really want to change, it can begin right now. Maybe you need Jesus in your life. You can have him. You can receive him, and he can change you. Maybe as a Christian, you're involved in some things you never thought you would be. It seems like your life and everybody around you in your life is falling apart. You're holding on to your family by your fingertips. Everything's fixing to go away. And you realize maybe for the first time, it's because of me. It's because of me she left. It's because of me my family don't want anything to do with me. It's because of me I don't have a job. It's because of me. Listen, change can begin this morning. We're going to sing in just a moment. If you want change in any way, it begins by wanting it, but also doing something on your part. I believe it involves and can involve, it should involve stepping out. You want that more than anything else. Maybe come and let me pray for you and talk to you or give you off to one of our counselors. Maybe you need to join this fellowship today. Whatever your need is, Listen, we're here. If you want change, would you come? Thank you for tuning in to our live stream. We hope you were encouraged by both the worship music and today's message. If you have any questions about your faith or would like to speak to our pastoral staff, we would love to hear from you. You may call the church office at 601-829-1004 or contact us on our website at fbcfannon.org.